I was accused of rape. I was accused of emotional abuse. I was accused of domestic violence. I was accused of slander. I was accused of uh, blackmail. I was accused of um, threats. Eight charges were pushed against me in court. Eight charges I have destroyed. How did I destroy them? During my relationship with this woman, I videotaped a lot of moments together. But we also talked a lot through the application of Skype. See, we used to play online games a lot. So we sat on two different computers. And uh, we would play together in the game. And uh, we used to use Skype to hold our conversations between each other. So all the Skype conversations, they got saved on Skype. So I went along and I screenshotted all the pictures on Skype, which actually saved my life and, not from, and for me not going to jail. During the Skype conversation, she left a lot of sex talk. And a lot of that sex talk was about her wanting me to rape her. I refused in all the conversations and I refused in real life. And because I refused, I actually lost my girlfriend, which is fine. I didn't really care to do that kind of stuff. I am not into that kind of stuff. I'm an average Christian man who respects his lady when he's with her. And I was pretty much the mangina at that time. I was only the mangina at that time because she came to me and she acted like as if she was very ill, very sick, bedridden sick. Uh, I took her in, I took care of her, and after a couple of months, she started becoming violent and evil, and after a while, I had to say, get out of my house, no more of it. So at one time in my life, I too was the brainwashed mangina. I wasn't a mangina that I would chase the vagina. I was not the mangina that I would actually uh, cry if I lost the uh, vagina, but I was the mangina that did try to keep my vagina happy. But as a man, we are raised that way. And you will not know the difference until you come across an evil woman that takes advantage of your kindness. The stupidity of women today that take a man's kindness and consider that to be weakness. That is a clear mental disorder. That is a clear brainwashing. It is not normal behavior for women to hate man. It is not normal. Woman is to desire man, to love man, to worship man, to want to be with the man. As God even says himself, man answers to God, woman answers to man. Now I know that might seem irrelevant in 2014, and I'm going to just leave that for there for right now and let you hear and think about what I just had to say. Now, let's get back to the rape charges. I was accused of rape and many other charges, eight in total. I have destroyed all eight in court, mostly thanks to Skype conversations between her and me. I couldn't have gone to jail for a long time. She had no mercy on me. She went to the police crying, saying she was raped. She gave a whole story, and the police did not buy her story because her story was too full of crap, over-dramatized, and that blew it. And that's the same reason why I got rid of her. Because her over-dramatizing became so out of hand that I couldn't be around her anymore. I also forgot to mention that she pushed me down the staircase. And I made a police report about that as well. And now, after three years, they're finally listening to me. And on the 6th of January, I have to go in and leave a full testimony against my ex-girlfriend. I gave them a gigantic evidence DVD of 4 gigabytes. An average screenshot is around 20 KB. So you can imagine how many screenshots are on this DVD, plus a couple of video footages and uh, her goodbye letter, for example. Uh, for seven months, the police took my evidence DVD and they threw it on a shelf. But they continued to call me a rapist. They continued to treat me as if I was a rapist. They continued to give me the short end of the stick. They never gave me the benefit of the doubt. And for seven months, they analyzed me like taking a microscope and going up my asshole with it. They came into my house with DNA tests. They came into my house looking for evidence uh, that could help find her because she was missing for a while. Uh, they came into my, ho my house and they were looking in my bedrooms for anything that could indicate some kind of sexual abuse, like sex toys or whatever, or chains or whatever they're looking for. I don't know, they're cops. They found nothing. I was acquitted of all charges. But for the last two and a half years, I have been fighting the psychopath. The psychopath that cannot let me go 
who has a continuous hooks into me, who keeps pretending to be the victim while she's nothing more than the villain, and for two and a half years the police have treated me as if I was a rapist. Only recently, on December 6th, I was declared not guilty of all charges. This was the final charge. Because since uh, April of 2012, I have been going back and forth to court to prove my innocence. On December 6th, I was finally cleared of the last charge of hers, which was, um, what was it called again? What do they call it? Hacking a cell phone. I was accused of hacking her so-called prepaid cell phone account, which is complete insanity. Anyways, um, now that her charges are dropped, my charges are still against her now. Now that she's accused me eight times falsely, the police are finally looking at my side. It's due to her own constant narcissism that has led to the police believing in me. For the first two and a half years, I told the police that she's a psychopath who's ready to kill somebody. She pushed me down the staircase, tried to kill me, she ran off, and then called me a rapist to cover her own tracks of pushing me down the staircase. After all of this has been reported, it took two and a half years for the police to stop listening to the woman and finally listen to the man. I'm going to court on the 6th of January, and you better believe it that I have everything that I have to get her ass locked up and thrown into an asylum. I want to say this to all females out there. When you use emotional rationality, you are being a psychopath. I will be talking more about this in the next video. You females that listen to me, because I know that 10% of you out there are female. If you use emotion in this world to benefit and to gain, you are a psychopath. There is no doubt about it. Even if a man watched his daughter be murdered, and he went to court to prosecute the murderer, and the murderer got off scot-free, and then the man who lost his daughter, goes out and kills the murderer. The moment he kills the murderer, the whole mindset he's going through, that's psychopathic. So even though he's not a psychopath, and he was a good guy who loved his daughter, he became the psychopath to defend her. Whenever you allow emotion in your life to dominate and let it make your decisions for you, you are a psychopath. Because a psychopathic behavior is the alternate behavior of the normal behavior, which is, a normal behavior is classified as rationality and responsibility. Not irresponsibility and emotional mindset. So if you are emotionally mindset, you have no responsibility, you lack boundaries, you lack respect for life and other people, you are a psychopath. There is no if you are a psychopath, I'm telling you. You are a psychopath. Now you might wonder, where do I get my qualifications from? Years of study. Not only do I study human psychology, I have studied the Bible. The Bible is actually about a psychopath running free on the world today, causing havoc everywhere. Did you know that Lucifer is the ultimate narcissist? in every way possible. He refuses authority. He is a boaster. He is a bragger. He is the ego tripper. Those are all clear signs of narcissism. He doesn't care about anybody else. He only cares about his own entity. That is a narcissist. And as I've stated before in previous videos, narcissism is psychopathy. And psychopathic behavior should not be tolerated in society. Now, I know many people do not believe that there are so many psychopaths out there today. But I'm telling you that at least 50% of people out there today, at least, are psychopaths. And thanks to the narcissism wave that has been brought in with the second wave of feminism, you best be believing that 90% of females out there today are narcissistic. And it's not only the second wave of feminism that brought out the narcissism, it's also the commercialism. Like shampoos that say, because you're worth it. Or uh, bottles of water that say, uh, women in control, women in power. All of that nonsense. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If something has to be forced onto you, then it's not natural. So if it's not natural, you have the right to reject it. Feminism is forced onto you. You have the right to reject it.